Hello and welcome to another Reroll tutorial video. In this video, I'm going to show you the solution on how to make your dwarf robot move around. And once again, we are going to talk about some concepts on, you know, on balancing the robot and weight distribution so that your robot can move around smoothly and perform some actions while you can stand on both legs. Okay, so now let's have a look on how the dwarf robot is actually moving first. So as you can see, it's moving forward. But try to think about it. How exactly is it moving forward? Look at the movement of the legs. It's pretty hard to see, right? From this position, it's really hard to see how it's actually moving. But if I pick it up, you can see that leg movement is actually very, very simple. But how is it so? How can such a simple movement make the robot move so smoothly? And also, as you can see, in our previous assembly, we only used four servos on the legs. Why is it that we only need so little servos for the robot to move so smoothly? So now I'm going to explain to you how it's going to move. For now, I'm going to push away the arms first so that we can have a clearer and better look on the legs. So, we know that we only use two servos for both for the legs in total. Now, why, why is it so? Why do we only use two legs? Because this is because mainly the concept of walking revolves around two points. The first point is balancing the body because there are only two limbs, two legs. So, when you're walking, there are, there's, a, there's a section, let's say when you're actually walking, there's actually a time when one of your legs leaves the ground and the other leg is the only leg that is touching the ground so you need to maintain the body balance to walk and then the second point is that the body, the body weight needs to be able to shift forward because let's say when it gradually shifts forward you will gradually move forward and then you'll be, you finally you'll be, you'll be walking so that's the two points that need to be fulfilled for a humanoid robot to be able to walk so that's why we only use two servos we only need one servo to fulfill each point, so one on each leg. So the bottom servo, I'll call them the ankle servo because it works some like an ankle. And the top servo, I call it the leg servo because it forms most of the leg. So the ankle servo's function is to balance the body. So something like this. If I shift it like this, the body will be able to balance like so. As you can see, only balancing on one leg. So the ankle servo functions to balance the body and then the leg servo functions to shift the body weight, something like this. See? But if the leg servo functions only by itself without the help of the ankle servo, your body will your your robot will only shuffle shuffle in place. Because both legs are in contact with the ground. So if something like you're shuffling both legs on the ground, you won't be able to move forward. And if you use if you only use the ankle servo, then it's very clear that you will definitely not move forward at all because you'll be doing like this. So, by walking, you need all four servos to work together simultaneously. You need to shift his body forward while balancing. And then, and then finally, you'll be able to program the robot to walk. So now I'm going to use the remote control to show you step by step how the robot moves forward by walking. Now, another look on how the robot is walking. So this is a walking program. So now I've already cut down the program to separate frames. So this is the first frame. This is the first frame. Now the second frame you can see, because previously I already said there are only four servos. And in fact, in each frame only a certain type of servo is walking, is moving. So let's say in frame one, the ankle servos move. In the second frame, the leg servos move. In the third frame, the angle servo move, and then the fourth frame, the legs servo move. So the first frame is something like this. Now, in the second frame, you can see that the angles, the angle servos are moving. Now, you can see it's actually only a very small movement, but this is already enough to shift the to shift the body weight. That's mainly what the angle servo needs to do is shift the body weight from left to right, thus balancing the robot. Now, so the first first frame, second frame, second frame is the angle servo move. So the third frame is now is the turn for the legs of both the frame. So as you can see, since just now the ankle servo is in this something like in a position like this, most of the weight is concentrated is concentrated on this leg. So if the leg servo shifts, it will put more concentration on put more concentration of this on this leg and then it will be able to push itself forward. And so in the fourth fourth frame is just an ankle. So, you, so it's now shifting to the right then back to the first frame second 
after it. Oops, I misclicked. Now, first, second, third, fourth. First, second, third, fourth. And if you put it all together, the robot can move smoothly. And so this is a walking so this is a walking motion. And if you apply the same concept, you can actually make the dwarf robot turn around from let's say turn to the left or turn to the right. So this is the turning this is the turning sequence. As you can see, <coughs> other than shifting forward, it's actually shifting to the right. So the program is also very similar. You see in one frame only the leg servo moves and then this and then in the other frame only the ankle servo moves. So the only main difference is that the ankle there's no difference in the movement of the ankle servos. It also it shifts to the left and the right, just like when you when the robot is walking, so as to as I said before, to but to balance the body. The difference is in the leg servos because as you can see the servos are the legs are always in the position like a V. You can see. Legs are something like a V shape. So when the robot is walking, the legs are something like this. Okay, it's shuffling forward. But when the robot is turning, the legs are actually this. You lift up, then shift this side, then shift in, shift, shift something like this. Okay. So this one for the turning for the turning sequence I like you guys to experiment it on your own. Because it's better to challenge yourself than for me to give you other instructions. But trust me, it's actually very easy and it's, it's very very similar to the walking program. And if you just reverse the process, you can make the robot turn to the left also. Just turning to the left. And of course, since the robot can move forward, it can definitely walk backwards. So this is just shifting the body weight backwards instead of shifting it forward. So this robot is actually pretty flexible. And as you can see, when the robot is moving, I made the head and the hands to also have the action as well. Actually, this is purely cosmetic, but it does help to shift the balance of the, the shift the weight of the robot forwards. Because it's just like us human beings when we walk, we, our hands also move back and forth, back and forth. It actually helps a bit in our balancing. So since this is a humanoid robot, of course you can perform some other actions. You can use the legs, the head and the legs, the head and the hands together to make the robot perform some special actions like dancing and all that. So here's an example, you can make it do something like this. So it's something like the jumping. Or you can also make it dance. But here's a problem. Right now, just now it's something like a like a warming up action. So if I click the, the action file for the dancing action see what happens. I will topple over. Now this is a problem for robots that only balance by using two limbs, that mainly the legs because let's say for a certain action it can balance very well but if you shift to the next action if there's a possibility that the robot might not be balanced and it will topple over. So this is a tip I have for you especially if you're using a remote to, to play around with your robot always have a reset reset button so let's say you allocate one action file and then the action file function is just returning the robot to its standstill standstill uh, position so let's say something like this you've done this action I can just click the reset and then it will return to its original position where the, all the body weight is balanced out and then it can move to the other action and there won't be problems of the robot toppling over okay so this of course is a tip you can use for other robots as well so it can return it to its original position. And that's about it for today. So of course, what we've learned mainly today is the walking motion and the concept of a humanoid robot walking. So of course, this is one of the many, many ways for a robot to walk around because I've, I'm pretty sure that you've, you've all seen on the internet from books or whatever that there are a lot of more advanced robots, advanced humanoid robots that use different ways of walking where they actually have more advanced uh, advanced legs where they can move around like a like a human being and they move around in a similar way to a human being and this one is mainly more of a shuffle shuffling movement but the reason I taught you guys how to build this humanoid robot is because I feel that this is one of the more basic ways for a robot to move around by using legs of course remember to go experiment by yourselves learn other ways for try out other ways for the robot to move around and that's about it 
Thank you for watching.